Robert, do you ever think when you come back into McLean Stadium that you're, it's kind of called the house that Robert Griffin III built after the touchdown pass to Terrence Williams? Has that ever crossed your mind? <laughs> no, it has not. But uh, I have heard that a bunch. <sighs> and, you know, it's um, it's one of those things that you don't call yourself humble, right? You let other people call you humble. Uh, and that's a, kind of the way I approach that. But I've been hearing, I have been hearing that that uh, phrase for years now. And, um, you know, it, for the people who are saying it, it's just, uh, it's an honor for, for, for some people to look at it that way. You want to always leave a place better than you found it. Um, and, you know, you guys have all been there. You guys remember Floyd Casey. You guys remember the fact that we had to drive across the city to go to workouts and we didn't have an on-campus facility. Um, so, you know, the, the, the young guys that are coming into Baylor now, they are spoiled, you know. They've got they have more than we did, but that's how you want it to be. Right. You always want to give back and and be able to build something. Uh, I think that's that's kind of what happened. I remember the days when Jerry wasn't dancing. You know, I remember the days when when Jerry Hill was was killing us. You know, I remember those days. But because we were able to build it um, the way that we did, you know, we were able to include more people and, and, and build the program to a place where it is today. Um, you know, I know Mac and. Uh, Coach Aranda, uh, and even before him, you know, Matt Rule, uh, they've all worked hard to overcome some of the obstacles the school has had to face over the years. But the the fact that Baylor football is where it is today still includes all of the things that happened in the past uh, and, and the way that it was built up. So, uh, like I said, I don't ever say that, uh, but I have heard it and uh, I'm honored that people view it that way. Next, we've got Jerry Hill. Robert, uh, you talked about it. I mean, they looked different this last week against West Virginia. From your perspective, what was the biggest difference in that game? Yeah, if you remember in the Oklahoma State game, uh, Tyquan Thornton had finally caught, uh, you know, a deep pass. Uh, and on the broadcast, I said, finally. You know, all of Baylor Nation saying, finally, they're throwing the ball to Tyquan Thornton and, and, and doing what he does best. And – the way that they accomplished that early in the West Virginia game was, was not only impressive, but it just showed you the, how dynamic uh, Tyquan Thornton is. You know, he caught that slant for a 75-yard touchdown. Uh, and then they, you know, the, there was, the corners giving him space because he's so fast and because he gave him space, he was able to go and take that ball to the house. But I think it was just um, they had a, a better plan against West Virginia, uh, maybe so than, than Oklahoma State. It was a home game, you know, uh, different environment. Uh, not that they don't play well on the road because they do. Um, so I thought that uh, just overall offensively, they stayed ahead of, this, of the chains. If you want to get into philosophy, that's really what it was. They, they stayed in positive down in distances like they had been all year, which they didn't do against Oklahoma State. Abram Smith, uh, you know, he was running like a madman. You know, <laughs> he, was, uh, he was doing his thing. And then I think uh, Jeff Grimes just did a good job mixing it up, trying to get the ball to different guys uh, and involving them in the game. Drew Estrada, Tyquan Thornton, Ben Sims. I thought they were very, uh, very effective in that. And when you watch the tape, both of these teams run pro style offenses, you know, uh, and I think that's what uh, people don't get. They're used to seeing Baylor run the spread and shoot and air raid, whatever you want to call it. Right. But just getting a bunch of guys out and, and running fast and doing it that way from our time there. Uh, but that's not what Jeff Grime does. And when you watch BYU, you see, you see similarities, you know, you see pro style concepts, you know, Ben Sims catches a touchdown on the wing set on a double play action with a jet sweep. I mean, I've seen, I see that every week in the NFL, you know? So I think uh, the plan they had against West Virginia was better. They wanted to come out and, and prove a point to say last week, isn't who we are. This is who we are. And uh, I mean, Gary had a career high in passing yards in the first half. Like, I mean, if you want to talk about, you want to talk about, hey, it all, it all worked out. It all, you know, went into stride. I think that's what it was. It was, uh, they, they were upset. I talked to Gary after the game, after the Oklahoma State game, and he was upset, you know, and, and rightfully so. I get it. Uh, so I think that they responded well because of that, that setback. Um, and I think that that's going to help them for the rest of the year. What have you seen from BYU's offense? Uh... Jaron Hall came back last week after missing a couple of games with 
rib injury. What, what do you see from their offense? Yeah, I mean, they got four wide receivers. Uh, you know, they got the Nicoa brothers, uh, Pau and then Romney, who is brother, his brother, Baylor Romney, which is, you know, his name's Baylor. Kind of, kind of interesting uh, as the backup QB. Uh, these four guys are, I mean, any one of them could be, could be a star uh, any given week. Uh, so I think when you watch them throw the ball, you can see glimpses of, of Jeff Grimes offense and what they do. And I, and I think that they also believe uh, because Jeff was there for, for three years uh, and the offensive uh, line coach, Eric Mateos, they believe they have a, a good feeling on what Baylor's going to do. Um, so I think that'll be an interesting dynamic, um, whether they're calling out plays before they happen or if they get tricked because, you know, they thought they saw something. Um, I think that's a, a new element uh, for, for Jeff Grimes and Baylor to kind of try to overcome. Uh, but offensively, they have uh, Algeria, the running back, um, not a home run hitter, but very solid running back, uh, powerful guy. Uh, and that's the way I look at them. If you look at their games closely, they, they've won close games. You know, they lost this past week, I think, what, 26-17. But all of their games have been close and then relatively low scoring games for college. Um, so it's not like they're going out and blowing people out like Baylor did last week. Um, so I think that's a, a key as well. They like to shorten the game, running the ball, throwing the ball, doing the pro style concepts. Defensively, they, they got a lot of movement into what they do. Um, but Jaron Hall came back, like you said, after missing two games with the bruised ribs. And I'm sure he'll feel better this week. I uh, heard that he didn't practice very much last week. And they're hoping that that uh, helps to more success uh, from him. Robert, with the transfer portal the way it is with quarterbacks, when Coach Bryles was there, Nick had to play early because of your injury. But – he had to wait. We know how long Bryce had to wait, Bryce Petty. And then Seth, do you think that would have changed or was everyone just knew that if they stayed patient, he would turn them into all American quarterbacks? Yeah. I mean, that's a, it's an interesting one because I thought, I think it also comes down to where you go. Um, because when, when me and Nick came in, me and Nick were same class. Uh, Nick was a, I'm not, I don't know how, I think he was a two or three star. And I was a four star uh, QB. And normally you see these transfers happen when you get these big time five-star recruits, you know, uh, they, that go to Alabama or, or go to Texas and, and the school brings in two or two or three of these guys in consecutive years. And then they can't play uh, because maybe one guy came to fruition or a guy gets benched, you know, like the Oklahoma situation with Spencer Rattler. And, uh, and they know that they can play and they're highly rated, so they want to go off and, and have another opportunity. So I think that had a little bit to do with it uh, at Baylor. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I think Bryce was a four-star, right? I, I, yeah, because he committed ten, to Tennessee initially. Yeah, and then he, and then he, then he decommitted um, when uh, – who was it that left there? Ole Miss coach – I mean, uh, Wake Forest coach? I can't remember. Man, I'm, I'm, I just talked to him, so that's why I remember, because he talked to me about Bryce. So um, from what I remember, you know, with me and Nick, Nick got to play a lot um, in 2009. Uh, I had to win the job in 2008 over uh, Blake Zemanski, Tyler Beatty, and Kirby Freeman. So when Nick came in, when, when we were there together, Nick got to play in 2009 when I got hurt. And uh, I don't ever remember there being any chatter. Uh, about Nick transferring out after that because, um, you know, he played well and we knew that once I was gone, uh, that he was going to be the guy um, just because of what he had, mainly because of what he had done in 2009. So when I look at the transfer portal, Bryce, Bryce needed the time to develop. You know, Seth, uh, I'm not sure how, how long did Seth sit? Not nearly as long. Yeah, not nearly as long as Bryce, but Bryce, you know, Bryce will be the first person to tell you he needed the time to sit uh, because in that offense with, with Coach Browse and, you know, and Kendall and Levy and, and, uh, and Randy and Philip, you know, Philip Montgomery, uh, once you learned that system and you could grow in that system, it was a very quarterback friendly system, you know. Um, so I think that's another reason why guys didn't leave. Because like you said, it's not that he would turn us into all American guys. It's just that a couple of years in that system with the weapons that they bring in and how they call it, uh, you were going to have a chance to not only put up numbers, but, but have a chance to, to go play at the next level. 
And I think Seth was going to be – Seth was going to break all the records, man, um, if he didn't get injured. Seth was, uh, was truly something special. I remember going and seeing him uh, when he had his surgery. But, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think it was a lot of those different things. And, uh, and, and a lot of the guys weren't highly recruited guys, weren't five-star recruits. If, if you don't mind a follow-up, we talked about Baylor quarterbacks, but what about Brigham Young's history with McMahon and Young and Detmer and, and, and the kind of names that they've put up over the years? As a quarterback, how special is their history? Oh, I mean, it's really special, especially recently, right, with Zach Wilson. Um, some people said he kind of came out of nowhere, but when you watched him play at BYU, I mean, he was making ridiculous throws left and right. Um, and, and Jeff, I talked with Jeff Grimes about it and, and just how – uh, Zach kind of compares to, to, to Gary and, uh, you know, Zach's a more natural thrower. Um, but that same type of gym rat feel that, that Zach had, Jeff gets that from, from Gary. And that's kind of why Gary won the job, you know, studying, knowing where to go with the ball, uh, being efficient. And as you see already this year, obviously knock on wood, he's thrown no interceptions. He's been very efficient throwing the football, uh, had a had a, a not as great game against Oklahoma State, but then came back and responded well against West Virginia. But when you look at BYU, I think the thing that I was a little surprised by uh, this week was that uh, Jaron Hall is the first African American quarterback in BYU's history, um, starting quarterback in their history. So I thought that was interesting, something that we'll definitely uh, you know point out on the air. Uh, but they've had great quarterbacks uh, in their history for sure. And it'll be cool to kind of add that history to the Big 12, won't it? Um, these, uh, you know, Steve Young and McMahon and, and Zach Wilson, they won't necessarily become, quote unquote, Big 12 quarterbacks. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how uh, that legacy uh, of those quarterbacks continues to develop uh, as they join the Big 12. Is there a chance I can ask you about your former NFL franchise? Yeah, yeah go ahead. There was times when it seemed like you were blitzed with a lot of things being written about you from within. And now that you see some of the things that are going on, does that surprise you? No, not at all. Doesn't surprise me at all. Um, yeah. Doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, just with everything that's going on. Uh, it's, it, and it's from the reporter, reporting standpoint, I think that's what you're getting at from what, what uh, came out either yes, last night or today. Um, yeah. You want to give your players the best opportunity to be successful, you know, and I think uh, some franchises have it figured out where they protect their players and uh, fall on the sword for their players and, and do everything they can to put them in the best situation. And, and some don't. And I think everybody gets to kind of get a glimpse into that, you know, right now.